Coming to you live from Studio 1A at the WPTN Studios in downtown Bennington, Vermont. It's Outdoor Secrets Unwrapped with Chris Bates, Stephanie Calabro, and the host. Mark? Nope. Oh, boy. <laughs> How about that? Mark? I'm oh. here. Oh, oh, there you are. Yay. Yay. We got him. How are you? <laughs> We're having a little yeah. issue with uh, our phone lines. No big deal. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the line with us today. And we we're just kind of warming up to the uh, snake worms, right? And um, Steph was kind of shocked about it. And, and I had to call Mark Scott. And I was like, Mark, who do I talk to? And he says, I'll find you somebody. So maybe you could shed some light on what a snake worm is. Well, I'll do my best. We okay. don't really have a snake worm expert in our department, but I'm the guy it falls to. So. Okay. <laughs> so if you could uh, tell us a little bit about them. Yeah, so these are, are non-native species, as you might have guessed. Uh, you know, In fact, really, all of our worms, for the most part, are not native to the area. They came in over the, the decades and, and even the centuries as, as people imported soil from other places. Um, but the snake worms probably have been in... The, in North America for quite a while, but, uh, you know, have only been recently discovered in Vermont, you know, probably within the last 10 or 20 years or so. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it, it may that may have been here for a while, but we just didn't know it. But uh, they are causing some concern, uh, you know, both for the gardeners out there who, who discover them in their lawns and uh, also for people who are, you know, working in conservation and who are concerned about the effects that these these worms might have on the forest and, uh, you know, forest regeneration. Right. So, you know, how many times, though, do you hear, oh, it's just a worm, you know, no big deal. It's just a worm. But that's not necessarily true with this particular one, right? Exactly. I mean, earthworms have a pretty good reputation. You know, people think earthworms gardening, they're good for your garden. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's true. That is is true. Uh, But there are some other consequences out there for for at least certain types of earthworms and these are these certainly fall into that that group um the the jumping worms or snake worms are a little bit different than the other ones out there and that they tend to live in the upper surface of the soil and they're they're just going through the organic matter they're just chewing it up like crazy and they're they're feeding on that top layer where you have uh you know the leaf litter decaying uh plant matter and that's really where a lot of uh, forest regeneration goes on. That's where you have the seedlings uh, ah, really taking hold. Right. And, and that layer is responsible for holding in the moisture and just providing good conditions. So when you lose big trees, you have the smaller trees ready to take their place. I see. Um, and, and so when they eat away that leaf litter, it really leaves soil is just not, it's just very poor for uh, seedlings and, and uh over time, you see the whole understory just kind of disappearing, and you, and you can see something similar in in the gardens and lawns where they where they're found also, where plants just don't do as well. Wow! So, step right, found yeah. them. Tell them where we found ours. Just... Well, we found them. You know, I was just weeding in my we we have flower gardens and you know beds everywhere, and so I was just weeding some of it, and it. I mean, they were like everywhere it wasn't like one or two there were like hundreds and they were more in the grass and they were they they were in the grass and they were in everything i was pulling up i they apparently eaten up all my mulch because there's no mulch left and you know exactly. they, they just go through everything and um yeah, like you said, uh, they don't seem to go very deep down. And I was wondering, you and you explained it there, how they are a danger to our, um, you know, maybe our sugar maples and things that you know they can't make little seedlings. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting observation you made too, and the fact that that mulch layer you have when you lay that down in your garden, what that's kind of what you're trying to do is is. Uh, mimic what you see in a forest with mm-hmm. uh you know the plant the plant and leaf litter 
you're trying to put in that organic layer that's going to conserve the moisture so your soil doesn't dry out for your plants and provide some of those nutrients. And just like you said, the, the, these crazy snake worms, as they're called, um, they call that for a reason, um, they get in there and they just eat that mulch right away. And like you said, when you, they are usually grouped together. When you, find, you don't just find one. You find a lot of them. Exactly. Right. You know, and they move like a snake when you touch them. You know, a regular earthworm kind of like rolls, I kind of, you know, like a roll in the ground, and then it will inch along. These things actually move like a snake. They're fast. And they're very and fast. On the surface. I, I, so, creepy. <laughs> so, creepy. Um, Mark, I was reading an article about them, and maybe you can talk a little bit about it if you know more on it. Is I was reading that they could be toxic to salamanders and birds Robins. that eat worms because they convert the uh, plant matter into a metal? Well, yeah, one of the things, and uh, you know, I think some of this is, is still kind of in the, the throes of research, okay. uh, but they can actually cause some of the nutrients, or excuse me, some of those toxic metals to be concentrated ah. in that layer because they're, they're eating all that material and then they're they're uh, they're then excreting it into that upper layer of soil, and this can be true of other earthworms as well. Some that dig down deeper into the soil, but uh, you know when they're when they're concentrating these metals in their own bodies and in the soil, then it could be detrimental to the species that eat them or use those areas. Boy, I don't know what the heck would want to eat those things. They are just nasty. <laughs> I mean, I like to go fishing, and I know the difference between these worms now. Yeah. I don't know. Are they good for fishing? Well, that, that may be one of the reasons that uh, we see them more and more, because you can imagine if somebody were fishing and they wanted some lively bait, this would probably be uh, <laughs> right up there. Yeah, right up they there, are, you know? right? Is, now, and, is, and, you know, it's, it's, it's okay, except what the problem comes when somebody has leftover bait, then what do they do with it? They just throw it out somewhere. Yeah, throw yeah. It out They just throw them out and it closes dirt and they go, oh, those things will live fine, right? And I don't think they right. need a mate. I think they can just... <laughs> They're asexual, right? Isn't that what it's called? Asexual. Well, that's, just that's one own? of the things that that's one of the things that make these uh, uh, do so well, and probably why you see an abundance of them in one place is uh, they don't need a mate. Uh, there, it's called parthenogenesis, where oh. the, the female can actually uh, produce viable eggs without a male, so they don't even have to be fertilized. She can just lay the eggs. She can be the only one out there, and uh, where do they, they lay their eggs? I'm sorry. Where do they lay their eggs? It's in the soil, and the eggs are very small. They probably they pretty much look like a little bit of dirt. When they when they uh, you know go through and eat the plant material, they kind of leave the soil looking grainy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been described as looking like really coarse uh, coffee grounds. Right. Oh. Mm -hmm. And it's and you may have seen that when you found them, uh, but it's not very good for for uh, plants to take hold in. But uh, their eggs would probably look not too different from the rest of that dirt that they leave behind. Wow! See camouflage, and they, and you wouldn't know because you wouldn't think anything of it, and you just cover it back up, and before you know it, now you got more of those icky things. That's right? Can you get rid and of then, them? Is there a way to get yeah. rid of them? Unfortunately, not not at this point. Anyway, uh, you know, people are looking into it and trying to figure out, you know, what methods that might work. But right now, there's just not any good way to get rid of them. It's still kind of a matter of try to get them, you know, try to keep them out of areas, prevent them, you know, getting brought in in soil or in other ways. Um, that's the best method. There are there's some research going on. Uh, I know there's somebody here in Vermont even who's working on this and. Uh, I think on his website he mentioned that he's looking at even uh, seeing if there's are a certain type of sand that has sharp edges to it. So when right. it mm -hmm. goes through the, the worm's gut, it um, causes lacerations and the worms die. Whether that's going to be a method that's useful without impacting other species, I don't know. But uh, there is work going on. You know, it's always something in this world, isn't it? Especially here in Vermont. It's never ending, right? If it's right? not the tick, it's the worm. Yeah, you know? if it's not a tick, it's a worm. If it's not the worm, it's a, a mouse or something. It's crazy. Right. It seems, like, seems like things are changing out there, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. How could people prevent it, you know, from... 
from spreading or from bringing it to your property like when they go to the nursery and they buy plants do, you know and they how repot do you know, them right you know, how they, do you know they're not yeah how do you know in there or? well that's that's a really good question and i don't know that we have a solution to that um you know what i've read is one way and i don't really think it's necessarily reasonable is that if you have if you're going to have compost buy it from a company that actually gets it to a certain temperature and i think that temperature is up around 105 110 something mm-hmm. like that uh above which the eggs and the and the, the worms themselves can't survive but i don't really know how many companies are doing that and again like you said if you're buying a plant then that's a different situation so right because it could be it, in the plant. you know i'm hoping somebody comes up with with a way of, of dealing with this but right now you just don't know do we expect them, though, to really do some serious damage down the line at some point to our forest floors? I, I think that that we will see some. And, in fact, I think we are seeing some of that Yikes. right now. Um, where they've been established, uh, research has shown that they have, they can take out that understory layer, you know, 50 to 60 percent, I believe, was the figure I, I came across over half of, of that understory can be diminished by the presence of these worms. And you can see that when you go out there, you can look, and if you're in an area that's been infested by these worms, you don't see a lot of plants on the forest floor, at least not the ones that would be most affected. You might see a lot of ferns. Uh, they tend to have deeper roots, or at least some of the ferns do. Uh, but some of those uh, plants that really need that upper layer to get established uh, have a harder time. So basically then, you know, the novice really wouldn't notice, but somebody that was really into our forests would know, holy cow, we got a problem here. I think so, yeah. Wow. I wonder how we would educate more people about this, other than through the radio show like we're doing now. Is there ways that people can learn about these snake worms? Well, there's a lot of information uh, that's, you know, starting to be available on the web for it. Uh, UVM has some good information that would be, you know, more local, what's right. going on here. They're looking at, uh, there's a researcher there who's, who's trying to track where they are in Vermont, where they're being established, and trying to uh, do a little bit of research on what some of the effects are, especially on our maples. Well, uh, they are in as, as, <laughs> Yeah, and as far as recommendations for people, you know, what you want to do is, is try not to spread them. If you know that they're in an area, uh, you know, don't move the, the dirt around. And if you have leftover dirt, you don't want to go, uh, you know, disposing of it near a forest edge because that's what some people will, off, you know, it's kind of natural. You have this leftover dirt. You don't want it in your yard. Right. It looks messy. So you go take it to the edge of the forest. Well, if it's got those worms in it, that could be introducing them into the into the woods as well. So, My, uh, you know, right, we live right at the bottom of a of the mountain, which, where it's all woods. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to keep it from going up into. Yeah, the I don't woods. know how you stop. I don't think we can stop it by us. I mean, it's just because we're so close to the to the forest floor there in the mountain. You know. Yes. Yeah, just... yeah, and they will move over time. Uh, you know, they're 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 moving. They can. I think I saw something like 10 to 15 meters a year uh, they can move. So That's a lot. It seems That's slow. big. Yeah, it, it is big. You know, in a way it seems slow, but um, over over the years, that, that they can actually move pretty far. Man. Right. I mean, they're fast. I, we, we saw them just run, I took zooming a video. across our, our, our yard. Yeah. <laughs> they could. Right, if they and like wanted, you said, they do actually move like snakes. They do. They, they do. They I took a video of do. it. Just, you know, and I, I, I mean, I do a lot of perennial gardening, and here in Vermont, we share. You know, like when I when I have extras or my plants have gotten larger, you know, I divide them out and you give them to somebody else, and vice versa, and. Uh, that's probably not a good policy to do because how would you even know if you had worm eggs in that? You wouldn't, right? And I, you know, I guess one one good thing is is the behavior that you see. So if you've had those worms established and you're you know familiar with your garden and you yep. look in that garden often, you'll probably know that they're there. Well, we know that now. See, we that's know the it thing. Now. Is I, we right. know we're aware of it now, so we will be very conscious about what we do with the dirt. Absolutely. Very conscious with it. So, 
All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Um, it's always a pleasure to talk with my friends up in uh, Montpelier. <laughs> Well, I was glad to join in. Yeah, I can't wait to get back up there. I can't wait to meet a lot of you guys. I didn't get a chance to do that uh, last session. So this session, maybe I get to do that. All right, great. All right, well, thank you so much for uh, helping us out with these icky snake worms. (laughs) All right, well, good luck with them. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. All right, thanks a lot. Yep. So, Steph, does that help you out a little more? With that, well, that it, it's kind of terrifies me. Yeah. Well, it's bad because <laughs> you can't stop. We can't stop them. We can't stop them. I don't know. So, got to heat them up. Yep. All right. Well, we need to take another <laughs> quick a break. And a uh, worms too. We'll be back with more <laughs> right after this at AM 1370 WBTN. To meet you again. May God bless you. Adios. men say, only fools, only fools are shit.